This is Moles worksheet number two. On worksheet one, we learned how to calculate the molar mass of an atom or compound. And in doing so, we really found our first of three definitions of a mole. So, one mole is equal to a molar mass of an atom or molecule. This is a number in grams per mole and it's different for each atom or molecule, which is why we learned how to calculate it each time we're given a different atom or molecule. But once we know the molar mass of an atom or molecule, then we can easily figure out the mass of several moles or the mass of part of a mole, right? If you know how much one mole of water weighs, then you can figure out how much five moles of water weighs. Likewise, if you know how much one mole of water weighs, you could figure out how much half a mole of water weighs. Simple multiplication or division. So again, much like I said during the factor label packet, I understand that the problems that we will give you on this worksheet are simple enough that you could solve them probably without using the factor label technique. But again, I'm having you practice it on this worksheet because when we get to later worksheets in this packet, it's going to get more complex and you won't be able to solve the problem without proper technique. So, once again, it's not so much the final answer that I'm interested in on these problems as seeing how you set it up. So, let's look at our first example. The first example asks us what is the mass of 5 moles of water, which in formula is H2O. So there's always going to be two steps to these problems, and the first step is always going to be calculating the molar mass. So for water we have two atoms of hydrogen, one atom of oxygen. Each hydrogen weighs 1.01 giving us a total hydrogen mass of 2.02, .02, and the one oxygen weighs 16. So when we add this together, we find that 18.02 grams of water is equal to one mole of water. And we are going to use this conversion right here to make a fraction, much like we did in the factor label packet. So, step two after we find the molar mass, is always going to be our factor label step. So, just like we did in the factor label packet, we are going to write what we are asked to find, which in this case is the number of grams of water, and we are going to set it equal to what we have been given. In this case, we've been told that we have 5 moles of water. Then we are going to create a fraction, and you can see that this 1 mole of H2O actually should be scooted over, that's a little typo, I apologize. Our fraction, if we corrected that typo, is that one mole of water is equal to 18.02 grams. So I've taken this conversion and I have created a fraction. And just like in factor label, I get to choose in each case what I want on the top and the bottom of my fraction. So in this case, I've put one mole on the bottom because I want to cancel out moles on top and moles in the bottom. So then I come up with a basic, simple multiplication problem of 5 times 18.02, which gives me my final answer of 90.1 grams of water. So, now you are going to try one. The next example asks us, what is the mass of 5 moles, or excuse me, 0.5 moles, of calcium carbonate, which is CaCO3. All right, so when they ask for mass in these problems, keep in mind that really means grams because grams is the unit that we use to measure mass. All right, so step one, calculate the molar mass. If we look on the periodic table, calcium weighs 40.08 grams, there's just one calcium. Uh, carbon weighs 12.01 grams. There's just one carbon. And oxygen weighs 16 grams, but in this case we have three oxygens. Right? 
So that 3 times 16 gives us 48. If we add the 40.08 plus 12.01 plus 48, we get 100.09 grams being equal to one mole. Now we can use this conversion here to set up our factor label problem. So they ask us what is the mass. That really means we want to know the number of grams because grams is a unit of mass. I set it equal to what I have been given, which is that I have 0.5 moles of CaCO3. And now I am going to multiply by my fraction. And my fraction is always made from the molar mass that I found in part one. So because I have moles on the top, I want to put the one mole in the bottom. And then I put the 100.09 grams on top. I can cancel out moles. And if I do my multiplication, I have 0.5 times 100.09. And if I calculate that, I get 50.05 grams of CaCO3. That would be my final answer. All right. So these are two examples that will help you with problems one through five when you get to class. Notice that in all of the problems one through five, you are given the number of moles and asked to find the grams, in other words, the mass. So you are going from moles to grams each time. So your final answer is always going to have units of grams. All right, that's the first type of problem. Problems six through 10 are gonna work a little bit differently. In fact, they're gonna be just the opposite. So in problems six through 10, you're going the other direction, right? You are given grams, mass, and asked to find the number of moles. So you're going from grams to moles, the opposite of problems five through 10. So same technique, you pretty much just have to reverse what you've been doing. So your fraction is gonna have reversed top and bottom units. Let's look at an example. Here it asks us how many moles of calcium chloride there are in 333 grams of calcium chloride. So step one, just like before, is to calculate the molar mass. In this formula, I have one calcium. If I look it up, it weighs 40.08. I have two chlorines. Each chlorine weighs 35.45 for a total of 70.9. I add those two numbers together and I get that 110.98 grams is equal to one mole, right? And that's gonna be my conversion factor. I set up my step two, my factor label problem, just like always, I'm asked to find the number of moles I've been given that I have 333 grams. I make my picket fence. I'm still gonna use my molar mass to make my fraction, but notice that this time my fraction is in reverse. In problems one through five, moles were on the bottom of my fraction, one mole, right? In this problem, the one mole is up on the top and the number of grams is on the bottom allowing me to cancel grams out on the top and the bottom. So I end up here, instead of with multiplication, a division problem. 333 divided by 110.98, and that gives me my final answer of three moles of calcium chloride. So when you do problems six through 10, the next time you're in class, you are going to follow this final example. And that is moles worksheet number two.